So what we're gonna do is start off with dynamic alignment. Put that over there. <clears throat> and this is this is what we were talking about before, is that your your weight is actually what's controlling your alignment. So you ever use a geometric compass? Uh geometric compass. So it was the, the oh, yeah, thing where you just, sure. yeah, you put a point in the middle and then yeah. it has a pencil on the end, draws yeah. a circle around it. So alignment actually works like that. And what the center point of the circle is, is your, your center of gravity, your center of mass. So that's the same thing as your axis. Golf has way too many terms that are the same thing. <laughs> it makes it confusing. But what you're actually wanting to learn how to do, this is, this is probably the most important thing as far as consistency goes in in every shot is being able to get your weight in the spot that you want it to be hands down across the board every professional that you're going to see the reason that they've reached to the level that they have is because of their ability to get their weight into the spot that they need it to be consistently regardless of how efficient their move is is something totally different their ability though to be able to feel where their weight needs to be essentially is what is actually working off of this geometry we're talking about. So the way that this works is you've got that, that center point in the middle and here's the object that we're making contact with right here. Here's our ball. And what actually happens is when we're swinging on an arc and we come around to make contact with the ball so here's this is representing our swing path this is just a, a really rough diagram so here's the circle that we're working on this is representing our balance point our axis which is typically right underneath our head and what happens is whenever we come around on this circle and we make contact, as long as our club face is gripped square, it's not shut or open, what's gonna happen is that the ball gets spit off at 90 degrees from wherever our center of weight is. So if I keep my weight right in the center and I come, come into impact, it gets, it's gonna come off 90 degrees from where my weight is here. So if I move my weight back, all of a sudden this whole thing shifts and this, this, new, this new alignment would be over here. As my weight shifts further forwards, All of a sudden the alignment has changed further to the right. Mm -hmm. So alignment is dynamic that way. And it's actually really important that we start understanding that we do want our weight to move forwards. We want to use that kinetic energy. It's just like when we're walking. That What's the first move that we do when we walk? Put your, foot, your, your weight goes forward? Something happens before that. Something allows you to do that with ease. Close your eyes and try and take a step. See if you can identify it. <laughs> it's really, really subtle. I fall forward a little bit. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And that's, that's the key is being able to use gravity to carry ourselves in the direction we want to go. So if you look at the amount of movement that I fall to tiptoe forwards, it's very, very subtle. Versus if I was going into a flat out run See how much how much more fall there is. Yeah. So what you're going to notice is it's it's very similar in the golf swing that the larger that the swing that you make, typically the more lateral motion that you're going to have, which is is that fall. So the tallest point in the swing is at is at the beginning of the swing. From that point on, we're actually falling out of vertical, and that's what allows our whole mass to get into motion. Is which just creates that kinetic energy and that's what we're looking to power our shots with. So as a byproduct of that, it 
our weight is moving further into our front leg, which causes the ball to be further back, which is changing that whole alignment to the right. So this circles all the way back to when you're actually setting up your shot, you're talking about focusing on a, on a very specific point. The tempo that you have in your mind is actually going to change the way that you set up in your alignment. And you really want to have that well defined, otherwise your brain is going to default to whatever power source you're used to using, whatever tempo you're used to using. And if that is different, that doesn't match up with, with where you want to go, and all of a sudden you, you come into your shot and you're lunging at it, and you start, you start firing at it and your alignment goes off to the right, either you're going to go ahead and release through and bail it off way offline, or what happens a lot of times is your brain senses that your alignment is going to be off. It will throw the brakes on and force you to try and pull on it looking for power. So when you see someone hit a big slice or a pull hook, it's actually caused by the exact same thing. Hmm. It's caused by the alignment ending up too far to the right and then either continuing on through it or it's caused by having, having that exact same thing and your brain trying to correct it last minute, shoving your weight backwards to keep that 90 degrees, and then you overshoot it. Because now you got all this leverage coming from the top and it pulls you out of balance. So anytime that you start to sense that you're losing that control over which direction that it's going or the amount that it's going as well, that's when you start to need to have, you need to make room for your alignment moving further to the right. So I'll just show a couple examples here. So if I take an alignment here, say at, it's gonna make a nice soft swing here. So if I start off here with my, my weight in the middle of my stance, and let's say I try and keep my weight in the middle of my stance, you see that, that last little pole up there on the hill behind the sand? Yes, uh, behind the sand. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's kind of that sand up there on the hill. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those two to, trees. To the right of the sand. Yeah, yeah, just right there. So if I keep my weight in the middle of my stance, I move just a little bit forwards on that. So if I keep my weight in the middle of my stance, See how it goes right at that spot? Yeah. Now I can take that exact same alignment and watch how much further to the right it'll start. That's a big difference, right? You know, I didn't see it. Oh, okay. It was going towards that red flag out there. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's a big yeah, difference. that's a big difference. So, and that is from the exact same setup. And you, you moved your alignment right by... Having my weight shifted farther into my left side. Okay. So just showing that the difference between where your weight is at setup versus where it is in impact makes a big difference wow. in where it's actually going to start. Interesting. So understanding alignment that way is, is much different than trying to focus on on this right here yeah this and and as i think everybody has seen you know even if you do this over and over again the ball still can end up in so yeah. many different places this is why it's because it has to do with where your weight is at impact uh -huh. and that's what relates to your shot so, i'm just going to hit a few shots right here and Start off. So I'm going to use that that blue flag as a wall down there, okay. and show as you a wall. as a wall, right? So my goal is to keep this to the left of the blue flag. Okay. So whenever I'm starting off, what I want to do is be able to feel that every day things are a little bit different. So every day, my ability to sense exactly how much movement that I have in my swing it changes depending on 
you know, what's going on physically and you know, what's been going on mentally. <sighs> Essentially where the breath is in my body, just my overall tension level. It's, it's something that's always in flux. So I need to figure out early on how much room I have to be able, how much room I need to be comfortable in moving it. So and going for this blue I'm going to go for that, that blue one here. right there. This one here. This one here, okay. yep. So I'm going to start off aiming over here to the left. All right, so it moved left to right, and it stopped moving to the right before it covered before it went across that blue flag. It's kind of hard to see against yeah, the uh, I'll, yeah, I'll, maybe I'll step back the background. To, yeah. See it. You see it from there. So you see that one was pretty straight. Yeah. So you actually want to get used to expecting your misses to be straight. And what that what that does is it creates this whole different different parameter to work within. So because when you start really getting used to feeling how to control your ball in the direction you want it to go, you'll start finding that when you mess it up, typically it's because you didn't fall enough in the direction that you wanted it to go rather than rather than too much <clears throat> and it just it creates this whole different way to to kind of look at your shots because if you're expecting your miss to be straight whenever you're picking out your shots it, it gives you a lot more context so say for instance there's water over on the left side and it's it's safe coming up to the green on the on the right side then you're going to be wanting to play more of a draw, and if it goes straight, it's fine. You, know, you still have a have an easy up to the green right there. If if it draws in, it's just going to get better and better. Yeah, and that's how you start to to kind of pick out your shots. Um, so let's talk a little bit more. What are you going to say? Oh, well, I was just I'd be picking straight, and if it manages to draw, but I'm not even trying to do a draw because I don't know how to do it reliably. I, I would go straight away from the water. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's good. And and that's kind of how it how it how you want it to start. Now, a straight shot, this is this is important. A straight shot's actually the hardest shot in golf to hit intentionally yeah. because everything is a dead heat. You don't really feel that your hands are necessarily gaining on the body or that your your body is really leading and everything has to be absolutely timed up perfect to to hit a straight shot. As you get more and more dialed in, you start being able to feel how to work it less and less. But like I was saying, the way that you actually make it easier is by learning to move the ball more. Mm. That's what we're gonna talk about right now is how to do that. So, back to the 90 degrees. So let's say I'm gonna start off here. Alright, so if this is this is my 90 degrees from setup. So I've got the weight in the middle of my stance. Up to the ball, 90 degrees out to the left. Pretty much at that blue flag right there. Okay, so you're you're aiming right and you're gonna draw it in. I'm I'm actually gonna set up for a fade, so okay. I'm gonna show you how to do this. So I'm gonna use that that yellow flag down there. Can you see that yellow flag sticking oh. up? Oh, way over here. Uh huh. Oh, I see. I'm going to use that as my wall. Okay. So now the way that the way that a fade works, we already know that the alignment's going to be moving to the right as my weight moves forwards. Correct. So the way that we create the spin is actually based off of the direction that our body is falling whenever we're moving into that front side. So we've got the the amount that we're moving into this and then the way that we move into it as far as the direction that we're moving into it actually creates the spin on the ball so for instance 
if if I set up here, so I've got 90 degrees to to this flag. When I get up here and I start moving this way, if I move to the right of this this line, this 90 degree line here, that will actually create a fade path. If I fall to the inside of it, that will create a draw path. And I don't expect all this to be sinking in right away. It takes some repetition and... You know, I had just read that on your site, one of your mm -hmm. videos, and I thought, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so this is great. It's, it's really fascinating because it becomes a feel thing. So for instance, it, at some point you, you realize for hitting a fade, it's just like aiming left and then walking out to the right. If you want to hit a draw, it's aiming out to the right and walking out to the left. And your body naturally starts moving more in those directions. And that, that's how we start being able to, to really control our balls. Just so, would you repeat that again? So let me just think. So if I'm, mm -hmm. if I'm trying to hit a, a fade mm -hmm. and I'm up here, you know, throwing the club up, mm -hmm. and now I want, to fade, I want to fall a little bit to the right more as I fall to make it to make it more of an outside path to make it a fade mm -hmm. outside, it will become more of an come outside. come stand directly behind me here so you can kind of see it <clears throat> so I'm gonna start off just showing you a fairly fairly straight shot which means that I'm gonna fall towards this this initial alignment And I actually put a little bit of a fade on it, yeah, more than I intended. Yeah. And this is honestly that that's the kind of stuff that we deal with every day is our sensitivity is always changing. So there I fell a little bit further right than I intended and it created a fade. Had I actually intended to fall more towards a fade, I probably would have hit even a bigger fade yeah. just for where my sensitivity yeah, is at the moment. First, yeah, for sure. Kind of getting an idea of what's going on. All right. Still had a baby fade on it, yeah. so I fell a little bit closer towards my initial line. So this initial 90 degrees, so if I fall a little bit more inside, it should, should straighten up. All right. My neck was a little tight. I've been doing a lot of workouts lately and I think I'm just a little bit on my toes this morning. So you see how it starts straightening out? Yeah. So each one of these, what I was doing is I was just kind of shaving off just a hair by hair, falling a little bit more this direction. Yeah. And the more that I do that, eventually after I fall far enough to the inside, it'll actually create create a draw. <laughs> oh, there was the straight shot yeah. <laughs> with a baby draw on it. Yeah. So let me fall further to the inside and I'll create more of a draw. You see it starts to turn over there. So that one, that one moved maybe just, maybe about five yards right to left. So you see how it starts bending that way? So I'm falling more to the inside. So let's go back to the fade here and just stand right down the line see if you can determine it's really difficult to see because it's it's the difference between falling here versus falling here and that's that would be straight I mean, that's, yeah that's a draw this would be more of a draw this would be a straight shot that would be a fade it's, very subtle. it's hard for me to see but i get the idea it is it is super subtle it is super subtle and that's why we actually want to we want to learn it more of an extreme and then learn to shave it back down. Yeah. 
So here I'm going to hit a bigger fade. So you see how that's bending a lot from, from left to right? Yes. And that's just based off of essentially when I'm coming through the shot, if I go ahead and just continue walking, See, I'm walking off to the right. Yeah. So if I wanted to hit a really big fade, essentially that's all I'm having to do is just walk off to the right. Sorry about that. That's kind of <laughs> appreciate it. Now, if I wanted to hit a really big draw, it would be very similar on the opposite side. I'm going to bring this all the way back. And I, I kind of hesitated slightly, but you see how that, how I'm walking more to the inside and then all of a sudden it creates that right to left. Yes. So you start becoming really sensitive to, as you're turning, as you're turning back. So as you're turning here, you start becoming really sensitive to is your body falling this way? Is it falling that way? Exactly. And there's just those tiny little discrepancies. And it, it can become a very subtle move. So it's just that much. Right. You know? And it's like, do you want to hit a fade? Do you want to hit it straighter? Do you want to hit more of a draw? And see, it goes. this goes more to the inside there. And that actually, that controls a lot of your, your spin and and everything there, so really subtle stuff. Interesting. Yeah. And, and you know, and by the way, I brought a 7-iron too if you want me to, to try it. Yeah, we actually, I'd like you to start with that. Yeah, yeah that'd yeah. be great. And, um, I want you to start off learning how to hit a high soft draw. Is actually where we're going to start today. That'd be perfect. Yeah. And, <laughs> cool. And, uh, if I'm lining, suppose I want it, you know, uh, uh, if I wanted to initiate in a certain direction, mm -hmm. where would you have me line up the, the blade uh, of the club. I mean, so the blade, you always want to set up with the blade square to wherever your, your weight is. You don't want to really get in the habit, unless you're, you're intentionally trying to add loft to it. Yeah. You, you don't want to be manipulating the blade in your grip. Right. So what you want to do is be able to have your, have your setup essentially just getting used to it being slightly left of where you where you intend it to be at the point of impact. Okay. Okay. So it's like sh you're you're like shooting skeet, right? Okay. It's always moving yeah. in this direction, even when you're hitting a draw. So if I say, for instance, I set up, you see that red flag down there? Yeah. So if I set up to, I want to draw it to that that red flag, and I set up, say I set up directly at that at that red flag. By the time that I come into impact, it's going to be starting it's going to be starting further right than that. Okay there. Okay. Definitely went uh, further right for sure. And then, and then it right. started drawing back to it, yeah. right? So what happened there was my initial alignment was at the red flag. By the time that I moved into it, it changed the alignment, you know, 10, 15 yards to the right of it. And when I fell, so the same motion as I'm, as I'm moving into it, that's the fall right there, that's the counterfall, the start of it, I fell slightly to the left of yeah. that initial alignment. So I fell slightly to the left of that red flag, and that's why it created that draw path that came back there. Interesting. You know, and often when I'm hitting... This is as complicated as golf gets, by the yeah. way. So we're kind of starting at the top and that, then everything's downhill from that here. That works so. for me. You know, this is great. <laughs> right on. Uh, a lot of my shots, you know, if I'm hitting well, great. They're going to go where I want. But uh, mm -hmm. often I will hit a push by, you know, 10 yards or whatever, 10, 15 yards. Sure. And maybe that's the explanation, part of the explanation anyway. Yeah. Well, so what happens is this is, this is on a probably the the most common thing that you hear from every modality is you're coming over the top yes people often say that yeah. you hear that all the time yeah. 
and that's that's what a push is. It's an it's an involuntary fade. Uh, you know, okay. It wasn't something that you intended to do. Although it's not curving. What I'm, what I'm thinking is, you know, sometimes I curve it and there's a fade and I can see the fade. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm just pushed, or it's a push fade. You know. Yeah. So it's starting right. Yeah, and that's that's the combination. that's the case. Yeah, I mean it's the it's the combination. Most of the time, what you'll see is. Uh, especially when people are starting off, it starts as a push, meaning it started further right than they intended, and then a lot of times it's got a slice on it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and that's that's what you see. If you've gotten to where it's it's just a push, where it just starts further right and maybe has a little fade on it, yeah, you're ahead of the curve. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that it's just showing that you're you're actually falling already pretty close to a good spot. Yeah. And you just need to learn how to put that in context, like with the the picking the right wall and the parameter right. and then as you you learn how to adjust the direction that you're falling and create the right initial alignment all of a sudden that starts fitting into the the shot that you were intending to make yeah. so uh, to, to circle back though what the reason that so much of it is involuntary has to do with the difference between shifting like this where you're you're using this is like a tai chi move where you're learning how to turn to the right in order to go to the left so right now i'm turning to the right but my weight is actually finishing this move to the right by moving it's a very passive move see as i relax my whole left side is relaxed right now so all the way down here so what happens is as i finish the turn my weight is moving this direction. This is, this is how I'm controlling the vector of my body. So what happens with most people though across the board, and especially whenever that transition gets fast, it gets tight up here. Yeah. We'll talk about that, certain things that, that cause a lot of tension, is they shift into the backswing and then they start the downswing by turning and shifting in to their front side. So what happens is you start moving this way and immediately all the, the weight of the arms, that 10% you know, that of your body weight that's in your, in your arms, seven to 10%, starts creating a lot of centripetal force, starts pulling you further off and now your weight gets pulled out this direction. Yeah. So that's why the common miss is a slice. Yeah. Is because everybody is shifting into their backswing, into their in their backswing they're shifting into this back foot and then they're trying to shift into the front foot in the downswing. Yeah. So not to mention they haven't created enough room, you know, far enough left for that already, but they're getting pulled out of balance and it's pulling them towards their toes and much more into a fade path. So as you're, which you already demonstrated that you've been working on this. Being able to feel, this is what my dad called 2-1 timing. So your weight goes to the right and back to the left yeah. with one motion. Oh, okay. So this one motion creates the, the full weight transfer yeah. and, and controls your alignment, it does everything. So do you remember, you know, because I'm just revisiting your videos in the last like three days or so, you know, uh -huh. and uh, showing it's all you, a like, crash course right yeah, now. Yeah, it's like you know, I did it maybe a couple weeks ago and then again mm -hmm. just before, and and I did remember that it's kind of a one mode. You're still still turning a bit, mm -hmm. and while you're continuing to turn, you're beginning to fall back. Mm -hmm. So you've already you got your weight over, you know, back here and then you're beginning to fall mm -hmm. before you've completed your turn a bit. It actually, so what happens is or, as you're, so right here, this is as far to the right as I can turn over my right leg. So what happens is as my weight starts moving into my left, see how my turn frees up a little bit more? Yeah. So I can turn deeper when I allow my weight to fall back ah. to the inside there. Yeah. That's the finish of the backswing. That's also where the shoulders start to be able to relax into it and drop. So it's just like you're, you're throwing it up. And as the arms are floating up, 
everything is, is starting to fall and you're just, you're able to, to time it out so that as the body starts falling, your shoulders start dropping and then everything just feeds right on through. Makes sense. Should I yeah. grab my seven iron? Yeah, 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 grab your seven iron. Good thing I brought it. <laughs> sand and the, and the driver. Perfect. Perfect. So I was, uh, if not, I will let you use mine. I, I was watching, you know, some of your free videos of uh, short game. Mm -hmm. I was interested, and I don't know if you or your dad was demoing this, but uh, I was trying my, my uh, chips, and boy, that was using your body rotation rather than your arms was <laughs> really instructive. And also your dad had this thing about... Uh, you know, the yips, I don't know that I have them, but once in a mm -hmm. while, you know, you really screw up a chip. Sure. And lengthening and kind of turning, that was really interesting. Spooning is, is fantastic. Is that Just, what he calls it? Yeah, that's a, it's a, where you put the club right up next to the ball, you stand up tall, you kind of go ahead and find that, find that spot to, yeah. to turn from. I tried this from, from here in a while. Interesting. And you start learning how to throw it from there. I actually got to where I could do this. Uh, I could throw it up to about 100 yards when I was practicing a lot. Really? It's really wild. Um, now, lately, I've just been doing it on the short game. But it, it shows you where you want to be at impact. Yeah. So when you start doing that, it shows you the position that you want to be at impact, which essentially is what we were talking about before, is it you want to be able to figure out where your weight needs to be at impact. Yeah. And that's that's that sensitivity that you're looking for. So when you're doing short game stuff, you just set up like you're going to spoon it. So if I was going to spoon it to that ball right there, yeah. so I'll say I wanted to, I got a little connected and threw a pass, but that's all part of it as you start feeling what's the pace, what's the alignment, all the posture and you get you get connected to where you want to be at impact and then once you feel that you're in that right spot you just throw a little backswing on it yeah you know, and do the same thing interesting yeah that that was really instructive okay so cool cool all right so a couple more fundamentals and like we said you're going to have this to to, to go back and, and Great. dig back into all this so sure. uh i want to go ahead and just just lay out some fundamentals for you starting with the grip okay one of the easiest ways to take your grip is when it's vertical hmm. so what happens is when it's 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 down like this we have a tendency to grip down the club mm -hmm. and what we want to be doing is we want to be gripping around it and what we're trying to do is we're trying to get rid of the tension in the hands and the wrists and the forearms and all the way up in the shoulders. So the way that we do that is by stretching the hands around. So we put it down here, like in the second pad. Like here? Yep, exactly. And so what you'll do is you pull back from the left and you push with the right. So you're trying to stretch it into the fingers. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And then you, you come from here and you just wrap your hand around it. Like, like this? Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. So you're just pushing it down and you're wrapping it around. And then here, whether you interlock or you overlap, I go with an interlock. I just have been doing it a long time. It makes me feel like my hands are more one. Okay. But I push it down into that second pad, pull back from the wrist here, and then stretch it over. There you go. Nice. You play guitar? I do. <laughs> I've been into classical lately. Nice. I can see it. I, anytime you got those those longer fingernail that's and one of the there things this tends to do is keep it in the fingers as yes. opposed to the palm i think that's really good and what's fascinating here too keep your grip is that you can relax your hands and go ahead and lean back a little bit it kind of works like a chinese finger trap oh. so you can pull on it here and you can keep your hands pretty relaxed and it just gets it gets cinched up in your hands from gripping it like that huh. So without having to squeeze onto it. Yeah. So it'll it'll just naturally naturally be able to relax more and 
see your hands get more perpendicular on the club here too, uh -huh. rather than gripping down it. So you see how your hands are really around the club this way? Yeah. And it's much easier to do this when the club is, is straight up and down like so this. So grab it like this. Yep, down in the fingers. Stretch. You want me to stretch like this? Or yeah, so it's, it's really... Like vertically or... So I'm stretching it this way. So I'm pushing it down. Oh, see, I'm, see. Pulling, I'm pulling my wrist so it's back. Not a, not a vertical stretch, it's a stretch just in general. Around, yeah. Yeah. So I'm pulling back from here yeah. and stretching it around. Okay. Yep. And this finger is kind of compact, and I put this one on, mm -hmm. push out with my left a little bit. Exactly. Stretch it. Exactly. And then you can kind of get to where, so you see this is here? Yeah. And then you can kind of get to where this just like sits on top of this here. It takes a little practice to to get that get that right in that spot but you'll you want find this it. one a little closer like that. yeah so it kind of sits this part starts to sit more in here there so you kind of work on that it takes a little adjustment sometimes I think your thumb there's a little short everybody's hands are a little bit different there you go you really stretch it around relax that part you got some tension in your hand there yeah. there you go put that on there you go Nice. Looks good. Now you just, when you're doing that, you check to see if the club is square. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> takes on a little different shape, I, right? I'm glad you're filming this. <laughs> <laughs> I know. There's, there's, there's a lot of little fundamental things that, that make a lot of difference because you're learning, essentially you're learning how to let go of tension in so many places that it can creep in. Yeah. And so that's that's one of the next things here that, that I want to work on. So go ahead and, and just throw it up to the top of the backswing. Okay. And just, just stop at the top. All right. Okay. So from here, I want you to take your right hand off the club. Okay. So do you feel a little bit of tension yeah, from going, here? Yep. Yeah. Now feel this. Better. It got softer all of a sudden? Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, same thing, go ahead and do the same thing with uh, taking your, your right hand off, or sorry, your left, left hand. hand. Mm -hmm. There you go. So you feel the difference between it being there yeah, versus... More, more tension everywhere. For yep, sure. the more that it gets laid off like that, yeah. it just immediately shoots right through there. So yes. this is something that is, it takes practice to do because anything that your hands are doing through the backswing will essentially move them more here or back here. It essentially moves them out of just going up. Yeah. The only thing that the hands and arms do in the swing need to do is go up mm. and they just follow the body. So what you'll find with this too is that the more natural that your posture gets, so you just did a great move right there. You stood up. Yeah. Right? It f feels more comfortable to, to relax from this position. So it's the same thing in the golf swing. You want to be able to actually be as tall as you can. And when you get down to the ball, you do it by sitting down rather than bending forwards from here. Because what happens is you bend forwards, the arms just naturally cantilever more to the inside. Yeah. And it pulls you towards your toes. Um, it also has a tendency to pull your, your hands more off your midline. Hmm. So when you're, when you're in the backswing, the strongest position for your body is going to be in front of your chest. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and turn this way. There you go. So your hands can be nice and high, more vertical here and you're gonna be much stronger here. The further that you get back this way in jujitsu, this is how you would pop somebody's shoulder out of place uh, because you're in a very weak position here yeah. and just from pushing right in here, that's how they put someone into an arm bar. Oh. <laughs> and people do this all the time in their golf swing and they, you know, they're, they're thinking that they're far. trying to go back, they're trying to get more back swing. Yeah. But what you're actually doing, and a lot of times they feel stronger from here or they feel what they imagine. feel is they're feeling leverage. And the, real isn't, the reason that they're feeling leverage is because it's going back in on the body rather than going out. Mm. So 
just learning how to be really passive so that your hands are just moving with this. And what you're gonna start feeling over time is that it starts low. So you mm. feel like your knees and your hands are connected mm. because your knees and your hips and your shoulders and your hands all start feeling like they're turning at the same pace. Mm. Everything gets very soft and very neutral that way. So let me ask you about the setup. You know, what I was taught was um, to, you know, these are flexed, but just mm -hmm. a little bit, but bend at your waist like this and then bring it down roughly, you know, that far from, and slight weight on the front, mm -hmm. uh, middle, you know, middle, not on the toes, and looking behind the ball mm -hmm. here. Uh, but I think now you're telling me something about rather than bending at the waist, maybe come down a little more with the knees or, or imagine you were going to do a squat so go ahead and throw this over your shoulders mm -hmm. so imagine you got a you know two three hundred pounds up here I would do it with my knees in this case exactly you would and, stay and back, back like that back a little bit same posture you want to be in so oh, yeah. imagine so this this posture right here this this athletic posture yeah. it's great if you want to go this way right but when you start realizing that your goal is to move in this direction, it really loses its context. Mm. So if I said you've got to go in this direction right now, how are you going to move? I'm going to fall this way and step Yeah, like just go ahead and go ahead and just start walking that direction right now. It's the same posture you want to be in. So the taller that you are, the reason that we walk as bipeds, the way that we've kind of evolved into doing that it's much more ergonomic. Mm. So it's, it's much easier for us to utilize gravity by standing up tall. That's why we don't walk around like, well, some of us do now because we're all sitting in front of the computer. But the ideal position for you to stand in is, is a taller one. It's much easier on the body to control that, that vertical fall that we use all the time. And it just is. So, so when I set up then, um you know, let's assume I have a, a grips right or whatever, but just in terms of my my body, you know, coming up to this ball, mm -hmm. my, normally I would be like this, mm -hmm. but you're suggesting maybe a little bit more in the knees. So what's fascinating is that the closer that we stand, there's a certain precipice. I discovered this from, from hitting a lot of one-handers, and I, I started getting into this whole distance progression where I... I break down all my shots into 25% increments and so I try and cover the cover the 25% one-handed, I usually do this with a three iron, so I go one-handed three iron, right-handed three iron, try and cover 25%, work it into that, that, that uh, with the wall and that, that front edge we were talking about. And what I started realizing when I'm hitting all these shots, so I'll go from 25% to 50 to 75, 100. If any time it comes up short, goes in the wrong way, or overdoes it, I bring it back down to the previous one so I can find my sequence. And by 25% you mean uh, a distance? Distance, right. So if it's a 200-yard club, I start at 50 yards. 50% 50 would be 100 yards. 75 would be 150. And that's a really good way to create sensitivity and to keep you from hitting that grab point yeah. as we start feeling once we start getting closer to our full power that's when we start feeling like we need to try and move at 100 percent pace yeah and honestly you never really need to move more than about 70 percent of your actual actual capacity because at that point you start diminishing the ability to keep everything in sequence so we can talk about that and that's actually one of the things we'll be doing with the driver drill today is is learning how to essentially kind of exhaust ourselves and what starts to happen at that level when we're when we're working at a high velocity how we start learning how to control our body parts at, at faster speeds um, to to circle that 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 back to we were talking about the the, the posture and the knees and being able to being able to to feel that 
you know, it, it took me a second to jump. I, I, I took that circle on a big circle. Uh, when you start standing close enough to it, it starts creating a, a different kind of initial move. So when you start standing close enough to it, it starts creating the necessity to work more around the back of your body because you need to create space for this arc size, right? Which is good. Then. It is good, yeah. So what happened was, the reason I was using that story of, of all the one-handers is I realized that when I started standing close enough to it that all of a sudden my, my hand and arm just started shooting up out in front of me. So, so often I was feeling where I'd come back in here, the hand was getting too far behind me, and I would really get stuck, and it was much harder to time out the change of direction. Mm. And once I started moving closer in on it, all of a sudden I could feel that I wasn't having to work near as hard in that, that heave, in that initial movement. So what you're going to find is that it's, it's better to get yourself standing closer to it and it's also going to help you with that, that taller posture. Hmm. So as you start standing closer to it like this, you're going to find yourself just sitting down and staying very tall in the upper body. That's really interesting. And it just starts creating this natural chain reaction that just moves you all the way through the heave, now you're moving more around the back of your body. It makes it easier to move into that counterfall and more neutral. This is what I was saying is everything really goes back to the beginning and how it yeah. feeds through the whole thing. That's, that's really interesting. So I can imagine if you're trying to reach for the ball, it's harder to be falling back if you're, if you're further away. It, it is. Yeah. It is. And it's harder on the body, too. So the more that you're, the more that you're bent over, the more likely you are to to put pressure into the lower back or into the hips and things like that. So it's, it's just a little bit more difficult to, to space it out. So, yeah. cause a lot of times you end up with, with more dip in there and things. Um, Trevino made it work pretty well. He stood pretty far from the ball, but you look at the way he had huge legs and he still was able to move himself around the back of his body. But I think it probably probably historically he, he favored a fade he, he hit a fade a lot more often and I think being further away from the ball probably made it more difficult for him to to hit the draw as consistently which was why he didn't like the masters as much the masters is always set up for a draw yeah so that that's kind of a hunch but. <laughs> so what we want to do here is we just want to start off we're gonna make some practice swings and we're going to start off with a really fundamental shot once we start hitting the ball. So this is being able to dial the distance way back with a full swing. And so what we're going to do is hit a draw about 100 yards. Okay. So you're going to take, take this 7-iron, and the goal is just to hit a, a nice high draw and be able to do this from a full swing so that you're regulating the pace and you're controlling the, the attitude of the body while you have an abundance of power. So you're yeah. just learning how to dial everything back and essentially get your knees and your hips and your shoulders and your hands all just turn into the same pace. So you're just going to be letting go of any extraneous movement. And we just start matching up the con that with the contour of the ground and it starts laying out a, you know, a road map for essentially how you want to hit every shot. That sounds great. Yeah. Okay. Right. So let's just go ahead and start making some practice swings. I just want you to brush the grass. Okay. <clears throat> the blue flag here, maybe? Yeah. So what we're going to do actually is, so this is how we're going to start. We're going to start you off aiming out to the right and then walking out to the left. So you see these, um, these little black and white checkered stakes there? Yeah. Okay. And then you see you see that pole that's all the way on the left over there. The red one. Um, yeah, there's the red one, and then there's a little yellow one down there, uh, kind of right over the edge. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do is is set up at the black ones. Okay. I want you to make a make a swing, the intention to brush the grass. But what you're going to do is you're going to walk out towards the yellow one. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Okay, we're not going to use a ball. We're just going to do practice swings. Mm -hmm. I'm lining up. Usually I think about what I'm lining up with here. And, uh, so you look good. So your 90 is, so right now your weight is under your head as it, as it normally is going to be. So it's about right here. Okay. So if you were to come up to here and then drew 90, you're pretty much right at those black and white checker, checkered stakes. I don't expect all those 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 things to be there right away. So let's go ahead and make a practice swing. There you go. All right, so that's what you want to do. So you want to set up. Here, I'll, I'll show you real quick. I was trying to fall in that direction uh, mm -hmm. toward the black. So if you really just make your intention to brush it and then just walk out to that yellow flag okay. and kind of forget everything else. <laughs> Good tempo. Nice, good brush. Probably because I'm not thinking about the swing. <laughs> exactly, and and right now that's 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 the idea. That's the idea. The rest of it's all going to come in time. That was not such a good brush. That was. A now what I want you to focus on here is the you're getting the brush down which is excellent now what I really want you to dial in is is your walk so when you're walking through see if you can make it poised so hang up over here Ooh. that looks so gentlemanly <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> <clears throat> it's like a there's a nonchalant confidence to it and that's what you want to feel whenever you're you're moving through your shots much better very nice Excellent. All right. Let me go ahead and just throw this within the path of that. And just take that same se se sequence. Ex exactly the same. The goal here is you're brushing the grass. Just brushing the grass and walking towards that yellow flag as smoothly and easily and as tall as you can. Beautiful. See how that was nice, high, and it drew from right to it left. Did, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Drew it right That's out of amazing. the box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're shocking me. <laughs> All right. Now what I want you to do is I want you to actually shorten that same full size swing, ah. but your goal is going to be to dial it back about another thirty yards. Ah. Okay. And I, I wasn't really thinking about how hard to swing. That was just a swing. Yeah. So. Yeah. So now we're going to add a little back. tempo into it. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking more about the walk, I suppose. That's so, think, feeling that walk, that walk might be a little bit slower now. Same poise, wow. same, same nice confidence, and just a little bit slower. I, I, I probably Still good. Yeah. That was about 20 yards shorter. Was it? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the other one was, was up on the hill there. That one was kind of more towards the base of the hill. Like so that was exactly slower, what you were looking for. Or even less. Didn't draw quite as much, and what happened there was the transition at the top uh -huh. just got a little bit fast, so it didn't give you the time to actually fall as much to the inside. Uh -huh. So that's that's what happened. 
So just give it a little, give it a, a breath more time, a breath more of time, I'm gonna use that as a, that is a way to say it, to complete that transition at the top. So when you get up to the top up here, just give yourself a little bit more time to make that transition. I was still on the fast side. It was, it was what now? On the fast side yeah. in the transition. So, man. I could definitely feel that wasn't uh, lights at the top. I was kind of. Mm -hmm. And so, what you're going to notice is it actually gets a lot easier, too, to feel the transition and the timing. The more neutral that this becomes, the taller that you are. So, there you were a little bit more bent over when you got to the top, and this is all the way over at parallel. Uh. So it's a little more difficult to be slow through here when you've got tension moving through here. So this is where this kind of stuff really starts to come into play. So as we progress into this and we start trying some of the drills and stuff, you'll, you'll start feeling more of the necessity to do that, which is, is what we want to do to create the environment that necessitates us to move in a more natural way. So for starters, I'm just going to show you a little bit different tempo here. Pretty slow tempo. Now let's see if I can dial that back even a little bit more. But you see how it had all the elements to it? Yeah. It true. was, and, and by elements I mean it, it brushed the grass, I walked out to the left and it drew. You know, aside from the neutrality and everything, just that's kind of the basic element of it there is I want to be able to match my arc up to the contour of the ground. I want to be walking out to the left and I want to be doing that in the most relaxed tall posture that I can. Now there I let it collapse a little bit where my arm, my arms move just a little bit faster than my turn. Um, still I got away with it, the shot ended up good. Uh, and that's kind of the the point is we've we've given ourselves so much room for error by aiming so far to the right over here that I can mess up the shot and still get away with it. Right. And that's that's kind of the point when you're out there on the course is trying pick, to avoid the trouble. Avoid the trouble, pick easy shots. Like realize that most every shot that you're gonna hit is gonna be a miss. Yeah. You know, Hogan. It's a game, game of misses. It's I a game of misses, good. yeah. I think there was the quote of Hogan that said he hit two or three perfect shots in a major winning round. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so the rest of them are slight misses, and that's, uh, that's just the name of the game. So try it again without the ball, and, and okay. <clears throat> before you even take your practice swing, what I want you to do is step outside the box here for a second. And I want you to... You see the spot that you're wanting to go over there, right? So kind of, see those two balls that are right next to each other to the uh, short left of that red stake? Yes. They're like right next yes. to each other. Yes. So let's put that as your focal point. Okay. And what I want you to do while you're standing right here is I want you to imagine exactly what the pace of your swing is gonna be able to work into to match it up to that distance. Okay, and for that I probably will need to, uh, I'm guessing that's like 130 yards or something, so I'm going to have to do a, close to a full swing. And if uh, I, of course if I, you tell me. I don't, I don't really think, I don't think it's quite that far, it's downhill quite a bit, so yeah. it's going to add, you know, probably, it's going to shorten it up by about 10, 15 yards. And that first one where you weren't even trying to turn yeah. Full pace. You were close to full pace. It was more up in that uh, that brown area up there, which is oh, about another it? 20, 25 oh, okay. yards up there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a, a dialed back swing mm -hmm. to get to there. To get to there. Yeah. Okay. So I'll do a practice swing before that. Right? And, then and so when you do your practice swing, what we want to see is 
if it feels the same way as what you have in your mind. The stronger that you're able to capture the feeling of the swing in your mind ahead of time, the more context everything else is going to have. So now is when you get to find out if your practice swing feels the same way as what you just imagined. Takes a lot of, a lot of control to slow down your swing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, one thing I sometimes helps just to do something really slow like that. Mm hmm. And then there you go. And try and feel like your knees and your hips and your shoulders are all turning at the same pace, as equal amount. So they're all turning at the same pace and an equal amount. In the back swing and the forward swing. Yeah. That look nice. Coolest. Awesome. Should I try one? Go for it. All right, so it drew, you had the distance pretty close. Yeah. Uh, you hit it a little bit heavy, transition was just a little bit fast. Okay. So the whole swing was just a little bit faster than the practice swing that you were yeah. taking. But your miss turned out pretty good. It, it did, didn't it? Mm -hmm. And it did feel a little heavy, but uh, the result was reasonable. Yeah. Reasonable is good. <laughs> reasonable is good, yeah. It means that you were, you're, you're working in that right direction. That's excellent. So I'm going to try a, a practice here. Let's see. Let's see. No. Let's do that again. So let's, let's try and get this a little bit higher out there. So you're going to intentionally add just a little bit of loft to it by putting it further forwards in the stance. Ooh. And you can even grip it slightly open. Okay. So this is, this is uh, an interesting caveat to this. If you can learn how to hit this really high and turn it over, even where you're adding loft to it. So imagine that you were taking a, taking a three iron turning it into a, a seven or an eight iron by adding loft to it and then shortening the distance to a hundred yards and still being able to turn it over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you, you start really about six inches from where I would normally put it. Right. So because you, what you're kind of doing is so you're, you're opening the blade to add loft to it. Okay. And what that does is that's changing the alignment further to the right. Yeah. So you're adding loft to it and it's, it's actually changing the alignment further to the right. So what you have to do is move the ball further forwards to essentially bring it back I into see. proper alignment. So now instead of being 90 degrees, you're working with say 130 degrees, 120 degrees. Yeah. Does that make sense? So what you can do is you can, you can aim further left. You can come back on the circle a little bit, walk around this way a touch. There you go. See, and now you're back to that, that alignment that you were looking for. See if you can still turn it over from there. So now you want me to stay here? Or? You're going to do the exact same thing. Yep, stay right there. Stay right here. And so, goal is still... So the, now let's see, it's forward of my stance, and the club is open here. Mm -hmm. But your alignment is just where you were a minute ago when it was, when it was square. It was it's like just now you have more loft on it. Okay. Interesting. Right. Yeah. That was also fast. It's good that you can you can sense that. Take a practice swing, brush the grass, see if you can set up with it like that where it's a little yeah, bit more so open. I'm gonna put here. You just grip it, grip it a little bit more open. I'm gonna You're gonna plan on brushing the grass up in here. Okay. That's pretty far forward. So let's do this. I 
back up in there. Mm -hmm. Stand up tall. So from where you are right now, go ahead, stand up, stand up. There you go, and just sit down. There you go. <laughs> this is very different from what I've been practicing. So sitting down like this, more upright. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, good, excellent. Tone that back just a little bit. Downshift. I have to dial it back even a little bit more. So what we're doing is we kind of played around with the geometry a little bit. It kind of levels it up a touch. A lot of things you can do to change the exterior environment. Better. Slow it down even more. Yeah. I have to imagine, okay, it's slower. Nice. Good. See if you can get just a little deeper brush. Yeah, it, that was definitely light. better. Still a hair on the fast side. You feel how you kind of lost your balance just a touch? Yeah. Yeah. So when you come through and you walk through, you just want it to be as relaxed as possible. This is where a lot of times if you focus more on the outcome of what you're wanting to do, it'll kind of circumvent everything and, and kind of the things that you're trying to trying to make happen here will just, just start to happen because you, you started focusing on trying to make a smooth walk. I will do that. I'll focus on the this nice walk. I need to brush that grass better. Smoother walk. Yeah, smoother walk. Smaller step, so when you come through it's just a... a little remember, yeah, you're going for a stroll here. This is just a, just a real laid back shot. There it was. That was better. That was much better, yeah. <coughs> so, take a second here, step back. See that spot out there you're trying to go? Yeah, the two balls, you mean? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Envision or feel the, the swing in your mind. So the more that you start visually seeing your swing and start feeling what the pace of it is to go to that spot in real time, the easier that it's going to be to carry it in here into your shot. Okay. Still a little fast, maybe. It's you know what? It's great though, is that you can sense that. Yeah. The fact that you can realize that everything is moving a little fast, 
lets you know that you're on the precipice of being able to slow it down. Yeah. So that's good. Uh, come, come over here for a second. We're going to make this really interesting because now the ball is slightly below our feet. We're on an uphill slope. So this means that everything's going to have to be just a little bit more exaggerated. So because gravity is trying to push us this way and it's trying to push us this way, so it's pushing us this way because there's a little bit of an upslope yeah. and, and it's trying to push us this way. Yes. So this comes back to what you were saying before that it doesn't really matter necessarily which direction your feet are pointed with the alignment. It only matters to, to the effect of are you able to turn through your shot. Regardless of the contour, and a lot of times people are setting up to these uphill shots like this. Yeah. You know, trying to match their shoulders to the slope. Yes. What we're looking to do is to be able to turn level over any contour. Level to true. To right. To to true straight up and down. So because if you look at an arc, just like imagine a imagine a big wheel. So if a wheel is rolling over the ground, it's rolling over flat flat ground the bottom of the wheel is going to be where it's touching touching the ground. Now all of a sudden imagine it's going way uphill. Which part of the wheel is going to be touching it? That side. It's going to be further forwards. Yeah. Opposite it would be further back. So it's the same thing here. All we're looking to do is just match up our arc with the contour of the ground. So if this is on a steep uphill slope we're just going to put the ball further forwards and then catch it more on the upswing. This gradient here isn't quite as strong as that one, but it's the same thing. So the ball goes slightly further forwards. My stance is going to be a little bit more narrowed so that I'm not climbing. If from here, if I've got to climb from my back foot up to my front foot, that gets more challenging. So it's a lot easier to have your feet closer together here. And by standing open, it's easier for me to turn all the way through my shot. If I set up too square to this, I'm gonna find restriction in my, in my hip flexor here. And it's gonna be very hard to go ahead and continue turning all the way through impact. So this is a little easier version of it right here but still challenging because this ball is below us. So we're going to have to sit down a little bit more. And I'm just going to walk out to the left. You see like the timing, how it gets really soft at the top. and I have this lie all the time when I play in San Francisco. Yeah? There's a very hilly course called Presidio. And Side hill lies everywhere. And, and uphill. And it works to your benefit. Like learning how to play over contours, especially when you start learning how to do this, you know, in different different kind of modes, it, it teaches you all kinds of stuff about being able to feel tempo and geometry and posture. Go ahead. For what the red stake? Uh, yeah. So your goal is still the same. You're going to start aiming by to those. Yep. Okay. At those so those black and white checkered stakes and bring it all the way back to the okay. to the yellow stake there. Now, do you want me to be some, somewhat forward? It's going to open exactly. Up a little bit. Yep. Your feet are going to go a little bit more together. A little more together. Yep. And be a little bit more open. So what you can feel here is, are you able to essentially turn your right pocket all the way past impact? Right. Not quite, right? Yeah. Okay. You're kind of about about over here. Okay. You want to so, like this? Yeah. yeah. So bring bring this foot back more this way. Open it more. Open like, it up. Like now try and turn because you're going to be walking through, right? Yeah. Right. So you want to make sure that you can walk in that direction easily. Okay. So I I'm open. It's forward. I'm, and I open and club a bit. Yep. You're just gonna go for a nice walk right there. Nice walk. Yep. 
Try that again. Just brush the grass and walk in that direction first. I, I, yeah. So I'll, <clears throat> I'll do a practice swing. Now. Let's go up here too, where it's a little bit more of an uphill slope. Terms of the positioning, uh, open or that's going to be easier. Mm -hmm. yeah, I would say that's as wide as you want your feet to be there. Yeah, so it could even be, a little could even be more narrow. Because mm -hmm. okay. now your your right foot is closer to the same level as your left foot. The wider they get, the the further down the hill that back foot would be, and the more you'd have to climb up and the hill. Here, instead of leaning a little bit behind the ball, but pretty straight up and down, and mm -hmm. flexities. posture looks good. Look pretty tall there. Practice. Brush the grass and walk to the left. Do that again. Go ahead and take three or four steps up the hill there so you can get an idea for what your pace is like in your walk. Okay. So I would say one of the one of the bad habits that I see when people are trying to walk through their shots is that they tend to stop after a single step or yeah. two steps. There's so much to learn within the first few seconds after your shot that you get a lot of feedback. So it's it's kind of hard to tell exactly what a walk is like when it stops here. Yeah. But if you go ahead and continue walking, you'll have that biofeedback real fresh in your mind there. So when you're coming through, you're going to notice after a few steps, am I tall? Am I off balance? Yeah. You know, what, what, what was all actually happening there that fed into that walk? So go ahead and let yourself walk up into the rough here. Give yourself a good few steps. Okay. That was really nice. That's a very good idea to do what you suggested there. Make it more and more about what you know what's going on afterwards and the rest of it starts to fall in line. So you feel there how that first step you were kind of fighting the edge of your foot? Yeah. But you got through it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's good. Nice. So what you can see in the difference, and if, if you were to have hit the ball on those, the the first one was, was close to that one right there. You would have seen more of a pronounced draw, would have been flush. The second one you would have seen would have been a straighter one because where you were kind of falling off to the right, you were yeah. you, you still made it happen, but you were kind of hugging the hugging the corner there a little bit more. You could feel that on the outside of your foot. Yeah. And your ball would have gone a little bit straighter than having turned over. That one would have turned over quite nicely. So that was that was really instructive. The last one, I was thinking specifically of just walking in that direction in a reasonable pace. That was my swing thought. The last swing. It's a really good swing thought. Yeah. So shall I try one there? Go for yeah. it. Okay. So we've done the practice swings. I'll line this up. I'm going to leave it forward and a bit open. Mm -hmm. And this is close. <clears throat> Beautiful. Yeah, the, that, uh, that worked pretty well. So, um, you know, the, the uh, draw was slight, right? Like maybe five yards or yeah. something, mm -hmm. which is good I think. Oh, that's really good especially like having the ball below your feet two or three inches here that's uh, it's impressive. Yeah. I yeah because like most people are, are you know are, are pushing it off of here because yeah. the hill has a tendency to whenever you're you're on a on a side hill slope one of the best things you can do to increase your consistency and your accuracy is to walk through your shots. Yeah. On the golf course everywhere because it's so easy to let gravity get the best of you right here. When you're focusing too much on contact with the ball, yeah. 
coming through and just, I don't know if you can see it here, but there's a little move where all of a sudden I'm shifting here and because I'm thinking about the ball, it's just so easy to start doing this. Yeah, I see. And yeah. if my focus is on the walk, then so it doesn't I, happen. And I try to focus on the target, but, uh, you know, target and the walk, you know, if I could just think of that curve, mm -hmm. I'm walking that way casually. Yeah. That was my swing thought. I'll try it again. <clears throat> it's interesting about you know shorter open open blade open blade but it's forward so it should draw a bit. <clears throat> Nice. Well, that was a definite draw there. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. So again, I'll line this up. Where am I going? Lining. So I'm not lining up with my target. I'm lining up to the starting place. So I'm lining up this way. And I'm opening this. Okay. Closer stance, open. A lot of things I'm thinking about. Huh? <laughs> I know they'll all start falling in line. Yeah. If you can get to where you're letting them all go, like you were saying, you had a really, you've had a really simple thought process there, of just walking yeah. calmly in that direction. Everything else really takes a backseat to that. Yeah, yeah. So I try to, uh, if I can do a reasonable uh, practice swing, and then just think target. So right now I'm thinking walk. I don't know, that was uh, thin, I think. So, I mean, that really was not that great of a swing yeah. for you, but if you look at it, you still clipped it off the turf, you still walked through it, it still had a little baby draw on it. Yeah. So you got away with a whole lot there. Yeah. Um, that's great. Yeah, which worked. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I uh, I don't think my backswing was, was very good. Yeah. It came, it was pretty flat at the top up there. It was pretty far out of vertical. Your yeah. body was a little bit crouched over. Yeah. So, so just stand up nice and tall. So I, I think, you know, let's do the practice swing first. Mm -hmm. you know, pretty Narrow your stance up there a little bit. Narrow, there you go. Open, practice swing. The posture has a lot to do with it, how we were talking about your posture is going to really help initiate it in the right way to where you can move more around the back of your legs. It'll create more space between your arms and the back of your body. So you'll feel more comfortable with your arms moving more out here rather than in here. If, I'm, if, if I'm you're standing strong. up tall, standing a little closer to the ball. Yeah. Okay, so now, instead of being in the center, uh, and, and the, doing this forward and opening it is because, or are we doing this particularly because of this shot, because I'm uphill and all, and I'm trying to draw? It's a, it's a combination of that. We're doing that because we want to hit it high, and we're also doing that because of the contour. So you kind of have uh, a double effect. You're putting it actually even more forward than you would just for the hill because you're wanting to hit it even higher. And I want to hit it high because I'm trying to maybe get over some trouble, so I'm opening up my 7-iron. It shows that you have a lot of a lot of control to be able to, to hit it higher like this because your body has to work more on, a, on an inside track. So you have to work more around your heels to be able to hit this shot. Very similar to a flop shot. close. Try putting the ball a little bit further forwards there. I think you're running out of room to keep turning. That's why <laughs> you're kind of popping up just a touch. Okay, so let's see. I'm aiming at that. So if I think about this on the course, uh, and you really want me to draw it much more like toward those two balls. I'd like to, yeah. Okay, so I, I need a, a, a more of a fall in that direction that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So it's so interesting to me that uh, I'm opening and I'm coming back a bit. Uh, 
relatively close, but pretty far forward. Now that would that'd be a beautiful shot off of that lie I mean, normally on the golf course for for the shot we're trying to hit here. What's that? That was really good. It was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, given the, the lie and everything. Uh, oh yeah. Definitely. So all right. So on this next one, see if you can dial the distance back a little bit more. See if you can get it to land on the green to the right of the yellow flag there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dial it back. I'm going to still aim for the black, but curve it that much? Yep. Or, okay. Yep. That's quite a lot of draw you want me to do. But uh, that's what I should be doing. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a lot. You may be able to, to find, you might be able to, to bring it in a little bit, aiming a little bit closer to it. Okay. You kind of play around with that. So it didn't have to be at the black there. Okay. So I'm here thinking about this. So... If I was like this, like it will automatically open the way I want, right? Right. You're aimed out. Right now, you're aimed out pretty far to the right. Remember, when you start adding loft to it, it aims you even further right. Yeah. So you'll have to come back around the circle. So just come back a little bit more here. There you go. Okay. Nice. <clears throat> It, so you had the distance, it went uh, exact distance of the yellow flag, it went higher, it went pretty straight, just had a baby draw on it. Uh, okay. So you had the tempo really good, the only thing that you might want to add a little bit is just falling slightly more to the inside. More inside. Yeah. But you're doing a really good job though. Good. This is, this is excellent. <laughs> it's shocking the hell out of me. <laughs> Because normally, you know, I just try to get a reasonable distance and uh, and then the darn things, okay, I got that one straight, good, let's see if I can reproduce it. But now I'm going, up, you know, in learning how to work it. Go. Yeah, exactly. And none of them are going right, you know, which we don't want. Until, until that becomes our intention. Yeah, until it becomes, exactly, exactly. So if I'm thinking on the course and I'm here and now I'm going to think, Okay, I'm going to step back and it's going to be open and uh, about there, stay close. Nice. Something like this. Looks good. Let's relax a little bit. Wow. Now, I, now that I, was... I looked back at the target. Now that went really far though, didn't, didn't it go... It did. It went a little further than where you were, were a little further than you were intending, yeah, but... It went to the, to the... hear how crisp it was flag, though? Right, left it did. It did. Mm -hmm. So that's much too far, but at least... No, that was, that was what we were... of going, of drawing it, that drew quite a bit. That's, that's excellent. That's a pretty good shot. Yeah, that was excellent. You just have to dial it back. Just yeah. dial it back a little bit. That's exactly what we were looking for. So let's think. I'm gonna aim kind of like five yards to the uh, left of the black pin. Okay. You want me to and try to? And I'm not shortening the. Often what I would do is try to choke up. We're doing this through tempo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'll stay with the normal length of the club, aiming here, and uh, open. There, it was fast in the change. Yeah. yeah. This is so instructive. <laughs> I have to find a place like this to practice. If if driving ranges would would build pitching mounds, 
on yeah. the on the driving range, it would be so much more beneficial to everyone's game. Yeah. Because you could work with all these different lies. You could work on the whole combination of them. And Most, a little quick at the top up there. That's where it's getting a little flat. Stand up a little bit taller. Okay. I never saw the result. Oh, there it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it looked pretty straight, I think, because I'm aiming there. That was that was fairly straight. Yeah. Yeah. But that's like we were saying. Your misses will start to go straight. Yeah, and I uh, at least I got the distance roughly. Mm -hmm. So, which was the intent. Nice. So, good, good job. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. awesome. So, All right, now we'll jump onto the drives. A question for you would be. Sure. Um, if I'm on a downhill, mm -hmm. uh, would I bring it back in my stance or anything like that? Exactly. So similar thing. And then in terms of the club, you've got me opening it to try to do a high, but I could also do it more in the center mm -hmm. uh, on the on the uh, on this one. Mm -hmm. you, so this was intentionally to try to get it to high. That's that's solid. to get it to go higher. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm going downhill, let's see mm -hmm. if I'm on yep. this kind of a slope. Um, Let's grab one real quick. Keep your feet kind of close. Again, you would keep your feet close and it would still be a little open. Okay. Yeah, see if you can just hit one over these little pine trees right here. Like, like, like over this? Yeah. Yeah, just out here to the right of the range. So take a practice swing and brush the grass. You'll find you'll brush it a little further back than you were on the okay. and, uh, on the flat lie or definitely the uphill lie. And this time, you want it in the center of my stance, or where would you like the ball? Uh, it's going to be a little bit, little bit back. Yeah, a little closer towards the center of your stance. It depends on the severity of the hill, really. Okay. So here, it's going to be closer towards the middle. On this shot, am I, do you want me to set it up for a draw or straight or what? What's the well, intent? Let's set up for. No, well, let's try for a little bit of a draw. Okay. So I'm I'm aiming like uh, I'll aim like the edge of this tr close tree mm -hmm. and intend to draw it over. Towards that yellow flag. Uh, yeah, oh, that, a real short one then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can keep dialing them back. So, I'm going here, close, and, um, and just walk it out to the left. Okay, and uh, now it's back in my stance. I won't have it open at all, club face, right? I'm just going to, mm -hmm. because we're not trying to do it high. Not reason, I had a baby so. baby draw on it right there. Was it? Yeah. yeah, just a touch. It was it was covered. 
and you brushed it off the ground, you walked through it, it was pretty good. So I'd always heard about uh, aiming at your target, but then, uh, but here we're going to aim, well anyway, I don't know what I heard, <laughs> I'll forget that. <laughs> Let's just try and walk further left this time. Okay. And slow it down in the change just a little bit more. Uh, it was pretty straight. It started off to the right, right over those trees, but uh, you had nice, crisp, clean contact. It's pretty difficult to draw it off this lie, okay. but <laughs> it, if if you can do it, it's really, really good. But you're you're doing fantastic to be able to to make those kind of adjustments, especially this early on, to where you can feel that you're bottoming out the arc in a slightly different spot. Yeah. You know, because it's on this downhill lie, and you're still able to match that up and be able to walk through it. I mean, that's that's a lot of really good things happening right there. And I've always, you know, thought about, uh, you know, since it's on a downhill, not very much here, but a little bit, um, the club is a little bit more, um, you know, a little loft, de-lofted. Mm -hmm. um, if I wanted to be higher shot, would I try? Would you ever try to? You're thinking open it exactly up? right. Yep. So, so, if I try so to say, for instance, it's down, but you got something that you've got to go up and over right yeah. there. Yeah, you just have to get the geometry matched up. So what I would normally choose is a more lofted club, mm -hmm. but you know, there's distance involved and all those things. You so got to take all that stuff into account. So with that in mind, should we try a lofted one? Mm -hmm. and keep your grip out in the same normal spot. And. Uh, So would I move it, you know, if I open it a little bit, mm -hmm. should I move it forward now, even though I'm downhill? Forward? Exactly. It's just a, it's just a balance right there because you added loft to it. So you got to move it slightly forwards for that. But maybe not as far forward as that uphill. Line. Exactly. Okay. So I'm imagining here. Awesome. I, oh, there it is. I see. So it probably drew a little bit because mm -hmm. I'm aiming about five or seven yards that way yeah. from where it landed. It was about a three yard draw. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <gasps> Excellent. Yeah. Are you ready to hit some drives? Sure. Should, cool. should I try one out of the sand? Go for it. Yeah. So, I can do that. What, what should we try? Should we do the same thing or something different? Uh, try and hit the same shot. So okay. move it, maybe move it a little bit more on that uphill slope right there, right in front of you. Okay. Just move the ball forwards just a touch. Like here? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Perfect. So put it far enough forwards for the slope. So you're going to want it even. Oh, okay. You're trying to go over here. Sorry. I was actually imagining you going towards that blue flag there. Oh, sure. I'll go forward. I mean, blue yeah. Flag. We could, we could do that one too. That one's definitely a really severe shot if you're going up over this little lip. Yeah, especially um, with a seven iron. Especially with a seven iron, yeah. You'd be wanting to take more loft from there for sure. Yeah. Um, that would be a really interesting shot. I'll, I'll go for the blue and I'll try to draw it. Yeah, try and draw it back to, say, the, the left of that clump of trees up there on the hill. So start it at the blue and then see kind of where that sand starts over there oh, to the try, right of the... Try to draw it up that direction. Yeah, try and draw it up that direction. So that's a, a severe draw. Um, I mean, like... It's to, moderate. To yeah, th this definitely. sand or that sand? To the... Let's say just the right edge of that sand up there okay. on the hill. And that distance? A little nursery up there. That distance? Or? Uh, you don't have to go quite that far. Honestly, I wouldn't be trying to go... Middle? Yeah, I'd be trying to go about maybe 30 yards short of that, just kind of slightly up the hill there a little bit. Okay. And you're trying to hit this a little thin, so when you set up to this, here, let me go ahead and put you in a stance and then you can just walk right into my stance. I want to hit it thin, huh? 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Because the last thing we want to do is get sand in between the club face and the Yeah, it's funny, I've always ball, so. put the ball back to make sure I'd hit the ball first. See, well, this is idea. this is the opposite, yeah. So you're because it's so easy to hit steep into it that yeah, way, yeah, especially if your alignment ends up too far to the right, which is so common. Yeah. So here we're just planning to hit it further forwards of the bottom of the arc and just catch it in the upswing and hit it a hit it a groove low. Okay, so let's see. Practice here. Can't do a practice here all the way, but I can at least get my weight up here. So this is where I want to be. I didn't get the Almost. Tennis, but I got the idea. Yeah. That was very short, I see. And you hit just a little behind it there. Did, so did I? Mm -hmm. So you, you hit the sand there. So oh. essentially what we're looking to do is pretty much miss the sand here altogether. Right. So that, that kind of changes the lie a little bit because now it's sitting down in there. Makes yeah. it even a little bit harder. You can still do it, but let's go ahead and put it right there. Give me an easy shot. A little bit, yeah. We'll, we'll do it gradually. <laughs> nice okay, grip. So make my own, uh, let's see, I'm here, I'm going to... Mm -hmm. So put it even further forwards. Like here. Yeah, and your weight's going to be far enough back at the point of impact so that you're going to catch it on the upswing. Okay. So essentially kind of where you are right now is about where you want to be at impact. Okay. So you might want to move your foot even a little bit further back so that you can move into that spot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow, so that's... Okay. You see what I'm saying there? Yeah. That's... It's all a function of time and space. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking now it's where I'm going to walk. That's what I'm thinking. Nice. Uh, I hit the sand first for sure. Mm -hmm. Which is not good in a fairway lie. All right, fairway. Stand up a little bit taller. So you're really going to have to stay on the back of your heels, heels here because that ball's above your feet too. Yeah. So you've got a little bit of a, a little bit of an uphill slope here and then the ball's also above your feet. So you have to really stay back on your heels here so that when you're coming through that you're kind of hitting a little bit like that. Here, watch, just watch a couple of them sure. here and then... right out of there so you see there how I'm not really taking any sand at all yeah that's just taking it a little thin see I've got to have my weight in the right spot so that I'm catching it slightly forwards see the bottom of my arc would would be about here yeah and I'm catching it up here That flight, it sounded really good though. Mm -hmm. Do you see it? Yep, landed up right past that last black checkered flag right there. Wow. Doo -doo. This is good. You're really getting a, a really good, good sense for geometry this morning. And this serves you for every shot that you hit. Because this will also teach you essentially how to control the trajectory on your drives as well. Sounds good to me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I've got this thing. Now, let's see. About like this, this, this spread here. That looks pretty good. Okay. And stand up tall. A little weight on my heels, a little, you know, middle to heels. Mm hmm. Think about 
about it a little bit. Soft. So on those last few shots, your weight has ended up essentially a little bit too far left, and it was causing you to hit down on it a little bit. You mean weight after I finished too far left? Your well, sorry, your your weight was ending up too much into your left foot on the downswing to be able to catch it that far in the upswing. I see. So your weight has to be far enough back so that you can catch the ball in the upswing there, so that you can you can hit it just a little on the thin side. There you go. So I didn't see it. Uh, it actually had a slight fade on it, maybe just a few yards, but it started at that blue flag and went just a few yards to the right of it. You feel how you clipped it out of there? Yeah. That was good. Yeah, and you got a lot more distance out of it that time. Yeah, for sure. And and uh, so I, I've never thought of hitting thin like that intentionally, that that would be a good thing. But, but do you want to always do that? Uh, when you're hitting fairway bunker shots, it's a really good way to go because yeah. here you're you're really wanting to to get your distance out of the bunker, right? And the same would be true if it's like on a down slope like here or something? Same same would be true on the down slope, yeah. You'd have it forward like that? You would, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, it has to go back because it's on the down slope, but it's got to go forward so that you can compromise. catch it. Yeah, it's a compromise there, so it's, it's taking in all the elements. Uh, now here you don't really have to open the club oh, unless you're trying to hit it higher okay. which isn't really necessary because you don't have too much of a lip there so okay. I just thought since it was forward isn't it gonna be higher anyway um, here we're going forward. you don't yeah you won't need to add any loft to it it'll already naturally have the loft because you're because you're putting it farther forwards oh, I see. Nice. I don't never saw the saw it. Very similar to the last shot. Had just a slight fade on it and was hit really crisp. Yeah, it felt good. Uh, nice. Yeah, a couple more right behind the right there. So see if you can take just a, a hair second longer in the change and walk out to the left just a little bit more. Okay. And just yeah. add a little draw to it. This is great though, because this is already a really advanced shot right here, I, I and think so too. you're 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 going right. I, you're taking to it like a fish in water, which is fantastic. So that one was pretty straight. Was it? Yeah, so you took you took that fade out of there just yeah. a little bit. So if you add just a little bit more of what you were doing there, we'll add a little bit of a draw element. So one thing I was looking at when you set that ball, it had had kind of a, a little bit of a fried egg in there. Yeah. So that ball was sitting down. Yeah. So had it been up where the others were, you would have hit that much, much closer. You'd have gotten more advancement out of that. But because it was sitting down like that, you were going to have to have to make a little little adjustment for it sitting sitting down what like that. What would I make? Have it more centered? Um, it, would, it would have to be a little bit more centered. You'd have to sit down on it just a little bit more. Sit just, down on my stance. Just to bit. drop the arc to it just a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's going to be, 
it just gets a little bit more challenging because you're trying to hit it thin, catch it slightly on the upswing, but the ball's sitting down in the ground. So you've yeah. got, you got about that much room for error. Yeah. Well, you, I mean, you really got to look at it. I mean, how much how much sand is there up around the side of the ball? So even that one there is sitting down. So yeah. you see how you pick up the ball, see how it's sitting down on the sand? Yeah. That's a very different lie than if it was sitting, say, like, like there, here. Yeah. To where it's kind of sitting up and you got room behind it. See, this is a very different lie right here than that right there that's interesting i always think of it being more buried as to so that's much more extreme if if i'm uh you know close to the green mm -hmm. then you might be hit a lofted shot and it stuck in there but if you're going for the green with a five iron or a driver or whatever mm -hmm. and, uh, and it rolled now it's going to oh. be on the top probably like you were saying like that you know it all depends on on what's going on in the sand so say for instance um you know, it, it rolls down. So here even, there's just the slightest bit. See, this is raised up just a little bit. Yeah. And imagine even say it was just, you know, say it ended up like like that and it just happened to have a little bit more sand behind it. Yeah. That's a very different shot all of a sudden. Wow. And it makes a big difference because if you came in from this angle here and managed to get that sand behind the club face and the ball, yeah. you're gonna lose that compression. Right, and so now I have to bring it back a little bit into the middle of the stance, a little closer anyway. Yeah, you probably would, yeah. Yeah, just to get it, uh, get contact. So you're dealing with these tiny little adjustments. I, they're so important. Yeah, know? they're so important, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Cause it's, yeah, that's that's the way that you, you, you have to be able to see that arc and how it matches up to the contour. and. Should we, yeah. should we try one of these that's more like that? Yeah, give it a go. Uh, you know, that's pretty common to, you know, often have it something run down with. You do. Most of the time what you're going to run into is something where it's, you know, where it'll be something where someone has raked it. Say, for instance, here you see how someone raked this, but it kind of clumped off and yeah. fell there. So you end up with something like that. Yeah. You know, now you got it, you got it behind there. Plus, this is a challenge. This would be a really challenging lie because you're on a downhill slope and you got sand behind it yeah so and you because of that you might choose an easier club that's not going to get there just to get out maybe just, a nine iron or something. right that's like where you start really start taking into account you know what's what's the best place that you can you can get it just to get out of there should we try it go for it okay so here let's see i got this going i'm uh and try to hit it thin, but be an open, but be a little, instead of being here, I'm going to be a little bit more in the center and try to stay back on the heels. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot going on there. That's okay though, you know. But yeah. And let's see. So I'm here. I'm going to bring this up. I think I hit the side of the... the you did, it rolled up just a little bit. That was really, really close though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Let's see where this is. That was really good. Yeah. Let's, let's try that one more time. I think, you, I think you just about had that. All right, so that lie is not quite as bad there, but it still is a challenging one. Because it's on that downhill and it's... Yeah, there you go. Okay. Now it's harder. This is really quite a subtle thing you're teaching me. It really is, yeah. We've, we've, we've kind of stumbled into advanced geometry. Oh, hit the lip again. So close. See, and this is where you're, you're dealing with, right? You've got a lip that you've yeah. got to cover, but you're on a down slope and the ball is sitting down. So yeah. you've got a trifecta of difficulty on this shot. So, so 
normally probably you know choose a nine iron or something. Yep. But imagine you've got something in front of you that you gotta you gotta get over. Yeah. You know, uh, maybe you got water on the side of it and you need to carry it. Need to carry it a hundred yards. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm intentionally, you know, I don't know what I'm intentionally doing. Try and put the ball, you got to try and put it a little bit further forwards here. Okay. But like you said, this might be a good instance for, for more loft. So the way that you're going to add more loft to it in this case, maintaining the seven iron, is just put it slightly further forwards. And uh, let's see, you're getting really close to it right there. Let's see. Oh, you okay? I think maybe narrowing your stance up might help just a little bit here. So let's see, we're kind of yeah, there. We go. Yeah, <laughs> this is a tough shot. your feet right there. So let me think about it. So for me, that seems like it's in the middle of my stance. Okay. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm trying to match it where I can get, I, I know I can make contact with the ball and then I'm also trying to, to, so I'm kind of moving it back on the slope there a little bit and then I'm trying to get it as far forward as I can so I can get it up over that lip there. Okay. And I'll open it a little bit, maybe. You could, you could do that. <laughs> that's yeah. That's that's a tough one there. Yeah. All right. Let's try that. Let's try that one more time. I'm gonna see if I can see if I can do this one here. Put a little bit more sand behind it. It seems like a, a lot of space that I should be able to clear that lift. I mean, you know, it's just tough because of the downhill slope here. Uh, so the downhill slope is making that lip in relation almost twice as high. Yeah. Because you're having to move it in the back of the stands. Because now all of a sudden what's happening is this seven iron is turning into uh, uh, into a five iron uh, because the more that it's going back, it's, yeah. it's de-lofting the club. And it's hard to add, it's hard to add loft to it because there's no, there's no clearance behind the ball. Uh, so it has to be more of a de descending blow because there's no uh, because there's all that sand behind it. Right. So we've just got a really complex shot. So I'm going to try and hit this a little bit steeper. So I won't be able to hit this quite as thin as I usually like to. Well, that was nice. Yeah. And see, I had, and I know I'm not going to get as much distance on it because I ended up with a little bit of sand in between the club face and the ball. Yeah. So I kind of just have to play for that. It's almost like a, there's a very similar shot when you're in the bunker. Say you, you got a 40, 50, 60 yard bunker shot where you would actually hit a seven iron, you know, six iron, five iron and hit the very similar shot or even like an eight or nine iron. It just depends on, on your lie and how much sand that you're taking out of there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was very instructive. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're very welcome. Yeah, you did a great job. So let's see if I'm going to do something like, I'm trying to 
think about what my arms are doing. Like this. Yeah, you can just kind of think. It goes out in front of you and then just stays up. So up in front like this. Mm -hmm. and there you go. Down, nice. back. Exactly. Nice. See if I can fall to the right or walk to the right. Yeah. yeah. Something like that? Looks good. Go for it. Okay, so let's see now. I'm aiming this way, mm -hmm. and there's my wall. Now let's see, I've got to bring it above the ball, so I'm going to jump like this, and then... Yep. Down and give it plenty of time through the transition. The place where most people rush it is is right through here, yeah. where they start going here into the downswing. Yeah. This is where you really want to get in that same sensation, like you're, you're just finishing the turn here. Yeah. So you're, this is where you slow down the transition. So it's here where you start having the control over over your fall. Okay. You know, it's just that slight move, which direction is it going and what amount is it going. Okay. And how about ball position? I, I'm putting it you know, probably a little further forwards because just okay. like just like the sand or, or just like an uphill shot because yeah. the ball is, is teed up here, you're gonna be wanting to catch it more on the upswing. So does this look like the right uh, I would say you probably could put it a little further forwards there. Even more. Yeah, actually, you have a good amount of room to work with it there. Okay. And, you know, if you want to hit it higher, you can put it a little bit further forward. But go ahead and start with it. Kind of find your, find your groove. Nice. Good start. And that faded. It did. Uh, and it covered, covered the blue. So you know you picked out a good cover distance and a good wall, and a good good initial alignment. I didn't see that at all. Let me uh, that one was a runner off to the left there. Okay. You got it got fast in that change of direction what we were talking about there. There you go. I would say that's really on the fast side. Well, Try and slow yeah. that whole thing down. Yeah. There you go. Fast is, yeah, that's the, the thing. Slow the whole thing down. All right. Nice. That's awesome. Right. So, funky. so there's a perfect example. You saw how that, that drew when you intended to fade it? I'm not even sure. Did it? It did. So okay. it started off, it, it ended up to the right of the blue flag, yeah. but it started drawing because what happened was you started going through here yeah. and your weight moved so far forwards this way that your alignment was to the right of where you anticipated uh -huh. and it shoved your body backwards uh. and pushed you into a draw path. So this is just where aim a little bit further left and dial the tempo down a little bit more in the change.
So you see how that went to the right of your wall there? Big time, yeah. Yeah, so aim further left on the next one. Yeah. Go ahead to the next series over here. I didn't see that, but it sounded good. Yeah, it was pretty straight, I think. Nice. See where I'm aiming. See, that's where it gets really fast through the change. Your hands move because your knees move. No more, no less. Okay. Do everything together. Everything together. Beautiful. Ooh, that was pretty good. It's going to be over my wall. Yep. So aim just a little further left on the next one. You can try and fall a little bit more to the left to lessen that fade. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, Very nice. Feel like get a little rush there. So your hands, that's a good example where your hands were moving faster than the pace of your your lower body. Hmm. Let me take off my shirt here. It's interesting because, uh, uh, you know, you're telling me that helps me think about what happened because uh, I know when I rush something, but this, but having everything in sequence is a different. You know, like you're saying, keep everything moving at the same... Yeah, it's almost like a statue turning back and forth. Yeah, a statue. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead to that, that series over there. Very close. It was a good, good yeah, miss. It landed right on it. Oh, did it? Mm -hmm. On the wall, you mean? Right on the wall. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. so. You're, you want to keep it a little bit further to the left of it. Because imagine everything to the right of that wall is water. All right, so one thing that happens to a lot of people here is was it was fast. And the place where it got really fast was through here. Uh -huh. So this is the part people start sometimes thinking of trying to create power or momentum here. Yeah. It's not the place to create momentum. You create momentum by getting your body to move into that slot. Uh -huh. That's what creates the, the ability to turn through.
much better. Uh, was that straight or it looked I'm aiming? It was almost dead straight. If it had anything, it was it was a slight fade. Okay. Yeah, because it looked uh, it was definitely to the right of where I was aiming, but I didn't see it. Which is is going to happen just because your weight's moving into it. So that's just how that dynamic alignment works. It is. You're doing good, though. You're making really good contact. You feel how your body kind of ended up shoved forwards a little bit there? That's what changed the alignment to the right. Yeah, it was definitely a rushed uh, bump for people. Mm -hmm. Just stay poised as you're turning around. Relax. Relax, yeah. Well, your shoulders will stay level, everything. I didn't see it. Uh, started a little bit left, had just a baby draw on it. So that's kind of where your, your body's shoving forwards and you got stuck and had to come back just slightly. Slow down that change just a little bit up there. If you want to go ahead and add the walk to it, add the walk to it. Get yourself thinking. Okay. A few steps further down the road and let everything else just feed backwards. There you go. I'm over my wall, I think, or close to, yeah, over and you the feel wall. the pace of your walk there, how it was a really fast paced walk. Was it? Yeah. And you notice how everything ended up further to the right? Yeah. Slow it down a little bit, make it a little smoother walk. You won't see as much alignment change. That's what he does. <laughs> 